So, uh, I hope you enjoy it. And I think this poem belongs more to, to, to you all than it does to me. Uh, I, I, I worked as a teacher on this schedule in Texas called the, the 187 schedule. That means I spend 187 days in my classroom with my students. There are other days when they're not there, but I get 187 days with these young people. When you interact with a young person for 187 days, you get to know them. And they get to know you. And one of those years when I was teaching, a kid walked into my classroom named John, and he taught me a thing or two, about a thing or two. So I had to write a poem for him, for all that he taught me. And this is the poem that got us the World Cup. So, uh, here goes. This poem's called Poem for John. So, the assignment my high school English students was to write a series of four short haiku poems that distinctly say something about themselves and then recite them to the class. These are the four poems that John recited that day. Speaking in a quiet, commutative way always came easy to me. Accident is equal to invention, but there's hope I still practice accidents. I restore antique radios. I like the way static feels in my palms. <laughs> You cannot deny the lucid fact that silence must succumb to voice. Now, let's know now, John. Although you never uttered one word in class, you spoke volumes to me. And you taught me a lesson in humility, because I realized that day in my blind and deaf arrogance that I asked you to master my language without attempting to learn one word of yours. So starting today, I'll begin by learning the signs of what I feel the most beautiful spoken words in existence. Words like... Moon. Eclipse. Grandfather. Sunflower. And I realize now, John, if I were ever to write you a poem, it would probably sound something like this to you. Mother was the moon. And father was the sun. The moon and sun that existed in a constant state of eclipse. So I learned to grow despite the darkness. And I learned at an early age of the power of spoken word. My mother's silence and my father's absence formed cave walls. My grandfather's words reverberated off of like children dancing and feel the purple simply for the sake of purple. And it is true. Metaphorically speaking, I am a sunflower growing wildly in the alley adjacent to nothing. Although my petals have set upwards toward darkness, my roots extend deeply toward the warmth of all the voices that nourished me or didn't nourish me. So thank you, silent mother. Thank you, absent father. Thank you, beautiful, all-encompassing grandfather. And thank you, John, my silent, poetic student. For your words, thank you. I've got a few more.